This video is all about echeveria, a little bit about how to grow them, a look at the wide range of echeverias that James Lucas has available, and at the end of the video, we'll take a look at James's collection to check out some of the rarer and more interesting varieties. Today, we're at Succulents Australia, and we're going to have a look at echeverias. Echeverias are a really diverse group of plants of approximately 150 species that are native to Mexico through down to Argentina. With 150 species, the hybridisation of them over the last few years has become really increased and there are now literally thousands of varieties of crosses. And this is a lovely crest. These are quite rare, can only be asexually propagated, which means by cutting, they don't really work well from leaf at all. Echeveras, I feel, are generally easy to grow. The main thing you really need is to keep the rain off them, like it's a bit wintry now and wet, and keep them dry. And they just like occasional waterings when they dry out. This is a beautiful Argavoides, red-tipped variegator. This is really rare. I've only ever produced a few plants of this one, and that's why it's so rare and sought after. The soil mix we use for the Echeveria and most of our succulents that we grow here, it's a pine bark mix with three types of uh, gravel in it and to keep it very open and aerated so it doesn't hold water around the roots for too long. It's designed so that it drains really easily and we allow the plants to dry it very well between waterings so that plants are not sitting in too much water. This is a hybrid that we have here. This is actually a cross between ebony and cuspidata and it's a particularly beautiful plant and it's ended up with a really dark needles but green on top. Over here you have Argavoides ebony and here you have another species, which is Echeveria cuspidata. And it is a cross between these two species, and it has both the attributes of these two plants, which come out really well in this really spectacular hybrid. Talking about hybrids, this is a champagne series that a gentleman called Hyun Suk Lee in Korea made. And here we have the purple, red version, green version, and white version. And they're actually spectacular. And these are the two parents from these. Now, this is Lao Ai. This is a favorite for hybridization. This brings out the white powder. And also, you can't see it in here, but that helps to create those lines and bars of white in the hybrid here. And the red, this is a variable freak of Argavoides that only a percentage of them turn out to be red. This is called Romeo, and a lot of its brothers and sisters are varying from green, pink, through to red. But the breeding of these, so therefore, in the breeding of these, we have white, red, pink, red, and the new one, which is extra dark purple. It's absolutely beautiful when it's more mature. Yeah, we're in a display area of a retail nursery, so, we present these plants as small plants and, um, and sell them. So, but a lot of these are our display plants going through here, the bigger specimens. We'd like to keep a few older specimens to show people what they actually turn into, grow like, and things like that. And actually a specimen like this, this is probably about six or seven years old, growing very slowly. This is J.C. Van Keppel. It's a, quite a rare beauty. Being an outdoor area in the nursery, this is what we call a highlight area. Now, we've used white plastic here, so it does shield the direct sunlight, but it's still a little bit shaded. But it's plenty of light, and it's light that brings out the colour in your plants. Look at the red tips on here. You know, it's, it's fresh, but brightly coloured. If that was in a shaded glass house, you would not get the red tips. You might get a little bit because of the winter cool, but not really. And the reds and colours bring out much more with good light. Now with watering, Echeveras really grow from spring through summer and autumn, and they really rest during winter. 
Now, because they're tropical, they're really like the south and USA, Mexico, down to Argentina, they're subtropical. They're used to six months dry and six months wet. And they can handle the water when they're growing well during the wet season. But they do like the good drainage because a lot of these actually occur on rocky slopes or mountain sides in Mexico. Yep. This is a lovely Echeveria, a really simple one, but this is called Japanese purple, really large growing. And this is only a small specimen, it can get a lot bigger than this one. So we're gonna show you that Echeverias can be from really large, exotic, through to small and compact. And uh, show you a couple more. Yeah, look, this is one of my favorites. This is a crest. Yeah, that's really lovely. Good matching pot. You can sort of see how it grows. This specimen is probably six or seven years old. And you could, with crests, they can only be done by cutting. So no leaf cuttings here. You have to wait till they grow, get a cutting. It makes them rare. And some people really like collecting crests because they're really different. This is another lovely hybrid. Orion getting its colour now in winter. Now that it's getting colder, the colours are coming out more and more and more. And this is Echeveria canti, a beautiful species. And we have another video on this one, and we'll give you the information on the notes, where to look at it. This is again a favourite. This is a true species, a natural species, but a well-selected form. I like the species, but I do like selected forms. A lot of the wild ones in nature, the leaves are actually really quite long and the red line around here is not as pronounced. This is a really well selected seedling which we clone. So this, is, this particular one is not grown from seed. This is grown from what we call a head cut and then we take the side pups off it. It makes it a much more valuable plant. And this one is so much better formed than the natural wild species. This is Echeveria minima and this is a one of the miniature echeveras. Now this isn't the smallest growing one, but it is very small. As you can see, the, the heads, maybe three centimetres, maybe possibly four. This one's actually what I call well grown because it is really neat, it's small and compact. It's beautiful dark red edge, really beautiful specimen. Now this group is echevera archivoides. Now this one is called Romeo and it's from a particular area, but it, it's a mutation and it mutated red and you are able to breed this with seed propagation. It does not grow well from cutting or leaf cutting, uh, but these are selected. When you grow a batch of seedlings of these, they're often green and red through to pink. So you pick out the very best, but one of my favorites. Now here we have one of the, what we call the bumpy echeveras. And we've just head cut this one. And they're big heads. And in a week or so, these will develop roots underneath. You can see it's already dried off. It's really ready to sit on top of a pot and get going. Now, because they're big heads, we also have a bit more. And that will root as well. All the bumpies are done with head cuts. Another beautiful specimen of a bumpy. There are many, many bumpy varieties. These are hybrids. And here's another colored version. And you can sort of see the older leaves get sort of reddy, pinkish, through to green in the center, lumpy and bumpy. We call them warty. This is a Graptiviria table, but I thought I'd like to show you this interesting one here. This, we do call it Echeveria, but we call it snow peach, but it is actually crossed this is another really good example of a cross, Echeveria laui, cross Graptiviria amethystina. And it is a spectacular cross. Whilst most hybrids are done overseas, this is actually done by a Melbourne lady called Michelle. And this is her own hybrid, which she gave to us a few years back, and we really love this one. Right, John, look at, look at that one for winter colour. Beautiful winter colour. One that we forgot is Dark Vader. And again, this is a really lovely hybrid. This, we believe, came from Taiwan or Korea, and I'm not quite sure which one. But this is a cross between Topsy-Turvy and Black Prince. 
So it has the attributes of both plants. This is a beautiful hybrid from Japan called Jipon Moon River. And it, for a variegate, it's actually quite easy to grow. Some variegates are very difficult and slow, but this one is actually very rewarding and successful for other growers. This Agavoides here, that's a beautiful plant. And it's actually, Agavoides is one of my favorite groups to work with as we go on. Some are hybrids, some are just selected forms. It could be very happy. This is a Korean hybrid. This is one of the more miniature ones. This is another Laowai type cross. And you can sort of see the white powder on that one. Beautiful shaped leaves. And this one here is very interesting. This is a Lyalocena monstrous form, which is a form of variegation. Monstrous means it has misshapen leaves and often lines in it, but not truly variegated. But it is considered to be a form of variegation. And it does have pups. And believe it or not, this one does grow from leaf successfully as a variegate. This is a very unusual occurrence. This is one we got in Japan, and uh, it's Pinwheel Revolution. So this is a sport from Pinwheel. So it is something that came out of it, and you're able to replicate it. It's been a really, really good seller, that one. Very popular, because tight, compact, everything else. This is crests. I'm quite keen on crests. Another form of crest. And you can see, you know, that'll be like a plant, a plant. So they were slow to get the cuttings off them. Here's another crest. That's Argavoides crest. It's quite a few years old. This is the more miniature form. You can get a large growing form. We actually have two forms of this one. Ah, here's now two Lilacena. This is very interesting, this one. These are Lilacena hybrids and they're almost perfect. White powder, but this one is particularly interesting. This is a form that we found. It goes pinky color later on, and it gets a beautiful brown marks on the leaves. Absolutely fabulous. Really very new and very unusual. And here we have a really rare one. This is a form of Ben Badis that's gone variegated. But this variegation is only temporary in the center of the plant. And as the leaves come out, they'll go green and the center will stay white. But it only appears at certain times of the year. We hope you enjoyed our look at Echeveria. If you'd like to know a little more about Echeveria, there's lots of links to resources in the notes below the video. We'll be back with another genus of succulents in a week or two. Subscribe to the YouTube channel for regular updates on succulents and in fact all aspects of gardening and as always good luck with your gardening.